And good evening and welcome to Train Aficionado Live. I'm Jonathan Higgins and we've got a great show for you tonight. We're doing something a little bit different where we're basically uh, looking at some photographs, some older photographs of stations along a line in Massachusetts. Basically a part of the old Colony Railroad uh, from basically Braintree, Massachusetts to Middleborough, Massachusetts. Um, why did I pick this line? Well, this line is holds a uh, special place in my heart. I lived in Middleborough, Massachusetts, you know, growing up uh, there, and also uh, being a commuter on the commuter rail, basically from Boston to uh, Middleborough. When I was uh, going to college, I took the uh, commuter rail train. So very familiar with the line. So what we're going to be looking at is the line in its heyday when it was first constructed, when it didn't have modern train stations. It had basically actual buildings um, that had character and everything. So we're going to take a look at the line in that sense. And then we're going to look at the future of the rail line uh, when passenger service basically tapered off and then came back again. And it seems to be doing quite well now with the MBTA commuter rail running service to Middleborough Lakeville and then expanding service uh, to um, Fall River and New Bedford are part of the, uh, the brand new project that they're working on there with the uh, South Coast Rail Project. So I'm really excited to uh, cover this topic tonight. Please let me know if you like to see more shows like this where we're kind of highlighting railroad history uh, through photographs. Um, certainly, a lot of the photographs that we're using tonight basically are, um, I'm trying to look for the word for it, but basically it's not a, um, it's public domain uh, photographs. That's what I was trying to grasp that, that, uh, that, that phrasing. So basically all these photographs I was able to search out through uh, various websites that indicate that these photographs are public domain um, at this point. A lot of them are going to be black and white and some of which that you're going to see in the slide deck, a few of those are actually my photographs from modern time. So let's dive into the slide deck uh, this evening and uh, go, go on a little bit of a journey down the uh, old Colony Railroad from Middleborough to Braintree. Actually, we're going to work our way south from Braintree to Middleborough. So we want to remind you, you can help support Train Aficionado by shopping our store, trainaficionado.com. We've got uh, t-shirts, hoodies, um, we've got new baseball hats, as you can see there. They're embroidered. They look awesome. Uh, we actually have, and that photograph is our trucker hat. Um, which is really neat. So definitely check that out. We've actually adjusted the pricing a little bit on the store as well. So it's a little bit more affordable for everyone. So definitely check that out. If you haven't uh, purchased one of those hats, make sure you do so. You know, you help promote the show and uh, you look really great while you're out rail finning with the train, a, train aficionado hat. Make sure you stay connected with us. Uh, sign up for our Trackside Bulletin. That's our little email blast that we periodically do. You can do that through our website, trainaficionado.com. And then, as always, we want to remind you that we're across social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Make sure you uh, follow, like, and subscribe to us on social media at Train Aficionado. Since you're watching us on YouTube right now, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up on that video as well. And uh, if you're watching this after uh, this live uh, broadcast, post something in the comments. Let us know that you really like the show and, and some topics you'd like us to cover in the future. We're really looking forward to uh, doing more uh, shows and kind of getting your feedback as well. All right, we're going to start in Boston, Massachusetts. So South Station, a beautiful station, as you can see here. Um, was opened in uh, 1899. Basically, there was several uh, train stations in Boston. A lot of the train uh, companies, you know, the various uh, rail providers, actually had their own depots and such. It eventually, all merged into South Station. So they basically all went into there, 
and ran trains out of there. So, you know, each independent company didn't have their own depot at this point. They kind of merged everything into one station, which makes sense. You know, if you wanted to, you know, hop from, let's say, the old colony line to another line, you could easily do that, you know, and, and without leaving the facility. It's almost like if we looked at modern airlines, you know, like Delta had their own airport and then JetBlue had their own airport. It's not going to make it easy for you to be able to go from one airline provider to the other. The same thing with the railroads. Each railroad in the beginning had its own, you know, let's say, um, the old colony line had their own uh, train depot and then, you know, XYZ rail had its own train depot. So it made it extremely difficult for you to be able to go from point A to point B and to point C because, you know, you may be going, um, you know, may have to take one railroad line in order to be able to, you know, go to the next. Here's a really cool photo that I was able to find. This is basically the yard and you can see the terminal in the background. Um, it looks a little different today. I mean, the they basically took out a portion of that covering, and they're actually uh, using the airspace that is above the tracks to basically build a high-rise building above the tracks, which is really interesting. Um, and this is, you know, uh, South Station uh, way back when. I'm trying to remember what... Uh, I didn't mark the, uh, the year of this photograph, but it was, uh, you know, probably... Um, probably early 1900s, you know, a uh, beautiful black and white photo. You can see there's a couple of towers there and lots and lots of switches. It's just amazing how many switches that, that are there. And there still are. I mean, with, with the station having approximately 13 tracks, um, there's certainly a lot of crossover switches and what such. So some uh, facts about South Station. Uh, the building was constructed in 1899 and cost $3.6 Now keep in mind, that's $3.6 million in $1899. So that was a huge chunk of change back then. Um, currently, there's 13 tracks with six island platforms. What basically means is the... The island is in the center, and then there's a track to the left and a track to the right. So these island platforms allow, you know, to be able to service two tracks at the same time. The MBTA um, currently uh, has about 28,000 uh, people boarding uh, the trains uh, typically at the station, and Amtrak has over um, 600,000. The station basically serves the MBTA commuter rail, Amtrak, uh, the MBTA red line, which is the subway, and then they have a rapid transit system for the busway, which is called the silver line. So basically, the silver line is really cool because it goes um, above ground and has a dedicated traffic lane on the road, and then it also goes underground as if it was a subway line. So it has a dedicated tunnel. And basically the Silver Line uh, provides from uh, South Station direct service to Logan Airport for each of the terminals. So basically um, incoming and departing. So the great thing about it is you can take the Silver Line uh, from Logan Airport over to South Station and then take a commuter rail train to all points uh, uh, from this station, which is really nice, neat. There's also a clock on the top of the the main uh, head house, basically on the photograph that we saw earlier. That's an operating hand wound clock. It's one of the largest in New England operating. So of course, you know most stations have a clock that's typically in the outside of the building. Of course, uh, many of you that may be familiar with Cincinnati, Ohio, of course, the Cincinnati Union Terminal has this iconic clock as well. Very important to have that clock there because, you, one, you want to know uh, what time it is because, you know, of course, your train's going to be departing out of there. You want to make sure that you make it to the platform on time. We're going to take a look at a couple of stations before we head down the line, of course. Uh, Quincy Station is located at the junction of the uh, South Shore Line and the old Colony Main Line. So basically, 
Um, this station was here right at a junction where basically the um, traffic would split going down one of the branches of the old colony line, in this case the uh, South Shore line. Taking a look at our next station here is Braintree Station. So this will start our journey traveling south towards Middleborough. And this station was located at the junction of the uh, South Shore Line and the Old Colony Line. Um, this one here is, um, and you can see where it's splitting off, you know, the, the station here uh, where it's going off to one direction and then the other going towards Middleborough. So there's dual platforms here one side for one line, the other side for the other. Of course, many of these stations went away um, due to various reasons. Some of them got torn down because of the red line subway line. Basically, um, that was uh, service, you know, coming out to Braintree. And of course, you know, some of the stations were in the, the new right-of-ways um, section there. So basically, they tore down uh, some of these stations. So let's uh, continue down our journey uh, from Braintree uh, to Middleborough, Massachusetts. So the Middleborough line was uh, a segment of commuter rail, not commuter rail, but a, a passenger train line uh, that the old Colony Railroad had serving uh, passengers from 1846 to 1959. And then of course um, right around 1959, a lot of the interstate highways uh, were fully built and a lot more people were moving from the train to the car. So they were traveling uh, through their vehicle versus, you know, taking the train. So, of course, you know, things have changed over the years and eventually a lot of people got sick of getting stuck in traffic. And then there was another demand for passenger service. Then the MBTA uh, started bringing uh, back some passenger service uh, down the line. So let's take a look at some of the spots along the old Colony Railroad where there was actual train stops. And of course we have South Braintree, Braintree Heights, uh, Holbrook, Avon, Montello, Brockton, Campello, uh, Matsfield, Westdale, uh, Bridgewater, and of course, Middleborough. So uh, some of these are still stops along the way. They may not be in the same spot as the original station. I can tell you right off the top of my head, um, traveling, of course, you have Braintree, and then you travel further down the line, and it's Holbrook Randolph, and then it's the, the Brockton stations, Montello, Brockton, Campello, and then down to Bridgewater, right by uh, Bridgewater University, uh, their campus. And then, of course, uh, Middleborough Lakeville. So um, positions of these train stops have kind of changed a little bit. But for the most part, those are the, the station stops that are there. So looking at the old Colony Railroad, there was a lot more stops. You keep in mind, you know, there was several villages along the right-of-way. So being able to provide more service, more people were more dependent on there. Maybe they were walking up to the train versus um, taking their car, parking in the commuter rail lot, and then taking the train. So lots of reasons why there was more stations back then. Of course, you know, we're taking a look at the um, South Braintree station here. Um, this station was located at the junction of the uh, Plymouth Line, which is known as the Plymouth-Kingston Line. And then it would be uh, along the where the line would split heading towards Plymouth-Kingston and then heading straight to Middleborough. Of course, this was one of the stations that was demolished right around uh, 1971 due to the construction of the Red Line. What a beautiful station it is. Super long platform, you know, a, a mix of that stone construction and wood construction. Of course, you know, modern stations do not look anything like this. A little bit smaller of a station. It looks almost like a house. A wooden structure. This one here uh, was uh, a smaller station and was at the junction of the Dighton-Somerset Railroad. 
Now, the Dighton Somerset Railroad was basically a, a line that ran somewhat parallel to the Middleborough line, but basically headed uh, towards um, towards Taunton. It kind of meandered, you know, along parallel, and then of course running all the way to Fall River, um, which was kind of interesting. And of course, this line, the Dighton Somerset line, is completely abandoned. I mean, there's still some remnants of it that you can see um, if you look at, you know, Google Satellite or just being a resident of of the various towns that it went through. Holbrook Station, a little bit larger station here. Um, you can see that it didn't have that huge platform, so it was a smaller station. You know, probably had a waiting room, a ticket office, and uh, was relatively, you know, great for doing the job for this particular location. You can see that, you know, it's it's right there. You know, there's no uh, big platform or anything. Then making our way further south. Now we've entered into Brockton. Um, so this is Montello Station, also known as Huntington Heights. Um, this station here, you can see... Um, you know, set back from the tracks a little bit. Looks like there is um, two tracks there. We can see an older vehicle over on the side there. Um, really, uh, really cool shot. Looks like a little boy there. I'm not sure if he's possibly rail fanning, but you can see him right there in the photograph. Now, Brockton, look at this station. It looks like a... a you know, something that you would see in London as a castle. I mean, it's a, a, a large station. You can see at this point when this uh, photograph was taken, there's uh, horse-drawn buggies and, um, you know, lots of green space around it as well. Being the city of Brockton, you know, there's, uh, you know, it's a city and there was still some green spaces here. Um, this station was opened in December of 1846 and then later replaced in 1890. Now, the reason being it was replaced is the city was basically looking to eliminate railroad crossings. You think of a, a downtown uh, of a city, the, the streets are relatively close together. So that basically you know, tells you that that the trains are going to be going through and blocking those crossings. So, of course, a lot of the locals are going to be complaining about, you know, having to be jammed up because of, you know, the train and the it's, you know, the train going through and it's it's blocking crossings. And also, you know, probably back then the same thing as now. People try to race the train, try to beat it. Um, and then, of course, accidents occur. So this station was replaced by a newer station, which when they elevated the, the right-of-way, of course, they had to elevate the stations as well. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, two buildings, one on one side of the tracks and one on the other. This would be commonly uh, seen for a line that's got two tracks. So basically, people heading inbound and outbound would be on the appropriate platform and to be able to get on that train. A beautiful station here, a little bit more uh, modern than the first one we saw, but not as elegant. Um, opened in 1897, and this is the elevated uh, station that you see here. Uh, similar towns that have, have changed stations because they've elevated the right-of-way. I believe Fall River, Massachusetts was one of those, and then um, a station in in Attleboro, Massachusetts, they elevated uh, the downtown right away, and then of course they put stations up that were at the elevation of the track. So this is something commonly you see, you know, especially in larger cities where they can, where they kind of want to elevate the track so people g cross underneath the right of way versus having to be stopped by those trains. So the last station stop, and this is the furthest south and for Brockton, is Campello. And this is a former station site, um, and it also serves as uh, a location where people could get off the train 
and go to work. Uh, you can see here that there's a shoe factory in the background there, quite a huge shoe factory. So a lot of people you know, may have used the train to commute, work at the factory, and then head on home back to their, uh, their, uh, their home, maybe out in Middleborough, or in this case, you know, and this line would go all the way to Fall River. Um, maybe they've traveled uh, that far south. Uh, Matfield Station. This is one that I wasn't too sure about. I didn't have a lot of details on this. Um, of course, this is not a station on the MBTA's current commuter rail line, but this is a, yet again a station at a junction, and it's at the, um, the Eastern Branch. So several little branches off of the, uh, the old colony line here. And you can see the station there, of course. You know, it's a smaller station. So probably it served, you know, a smaller community. Not that big, long uh, platform that we've seen at some of the stations. Uh, looks like about two tracks here. Uh, and then, um, you know, we can see some green spaces, which is really nice, you know, to be able to see that as well. Let's continue further south. Westdale is another station, and yet again, at a junction of another branch, the Whitman branch. Uh, so another spur that was off the old colony line. A lot of these spurs, you know, the Whitman branch and then the, um, the Eastern branch are no longer there anymore. They're basically gone. So a lot of these branches off the main line didn't survive time, essentially. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, railroads, you know, when the passenger service went away, you know, freight service basically kept the railroad line alive. And then if, you know, if the freight companies didn't have customers along the routes, then, or, or if it wasn't a major artery or connection, you know, to be able to get from, you know, let's say from Middleborough to Boston, you know, um, they would eventually abandon the line because if, you know, they're not going to maintain a line if they're not making the almighty dollar money um, off of it. Continuing further south, now this station, actually um, almost all the stations that we've shown so far besides uh, South Station is still around. All the other stations are no longer there. They're gone. But this station here, um, Bradford Gilbert designed this uh, uh, station. He's from New York and it was built in 1894. This station is still around. You won't believe what's in the station. It's actually a Burger King. It's one of the most unique Burger Kings that you'll probably ever see. I mean, traditionally, you know, they're in the same type of square box building with their, you know, with their, with their colors that they've got branded for Burger King. This Burger King is actually in the Bridgewater station. Um, been in there. Uh, of course, you know, the outside still looks like a train station. The inside looks like a Burger King. There is some photographs inside the station, you know, showing, you know, what the building looked like back in the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of the stations that actually stand the test of time. Uh, and the great thing about it, it's over, as you can see there, 1894, it's over 100 years old. So it's still around. It's right off the main drag heading uh, through Bridgewater. So you can see it uh, right there. Uh, and then the MBTA Bridgewater station is just a bit south of, uh, of this location. Now we make our way to Middleborough. Middleborough's main station was built in 1890 and was destroyed by a fire in 1988. Uh, believe it or not, I was around, you know, in this time and I actually saw this building when it was there. And then unfortunately, I saw the demise of it uh, when the uh, building was set on fire in 1988 and unfortunately they ended up tearing down the building um, the building was basically used as a, an office for Conrail when I was a kid so basically they would use the building you know as an office I mean Middleborough was quite a hub of uh, 
for the railroads because it joined up to a lot of railroad lines. You know, you could basically from Middleborough, you could get to Fall River, New Bedford. You could also get to Cape Cod. Uh, you could get to, of course, uh, Taunton. And you could get to Providence, Rhode Island. And then make your way down what's known as the Northeast Corridor down to New York, Washington, D.C., and so on. Here's a photograph of the building um, taken in 1972. Of course, you know, the overhang is gone. The long platform's gone. Um, most of the windows are boarded up. It doesn't look as elegant as it once did when it had passenger service. And then, of course, Conrail came around and then ended up using the space as office space and such, you know, for the workers that worked out of the yard. Here's some photographs from my own uh, photo collection. Uh, my dad and I would watch uh, Conrail doing yard moves uh, where the station was. And um, typically on Sundays, we would sit there and watch them uh, set up a train to move later that evening. And then uh, we used to uh, follow the Cape Cotter. Now, this was a train that originated from... Uh, New York City, and then made its way to um, Attleboro, Massachusetts, and then took what was known today is the Middleborough Secondary, and then made its way to the old colony Cape Cod Branch, making its way all the way to um, Hyannis, Massachusetts. So there was uh, what we call a Y. Uh, basically looks like a Y and basically it's making the trains making its way around the curve of the Y and you can see that Amtrak is coming from Hyannis back uh, to head back to New York and this was probably taken on Sunday um, afternoon slash evening and the Cape Cotter basically ran from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day and it was a weekend train basically Train would go down on Friday nights. The tra uh, train set would lay over over the weekend and then return back to New York on Sunday. Here's a more modern day photo that I ended up taking from the uh, MBTA commuter rail train. And I was able to take a photo through the window and you can see uh, CSX you know, probably parked a little bit further south from that old Conrail photo that I've taken. And then the yard here, which doesn't have as many tracks as it used to in this photograph, they actually added in more tracks. So apparently CSX has got a few more customers here. And then, of course, this serves as a junction for the uh, Mass Coastal Railroad, you know, for them to exchange cars with CSX and Mass Coastal to exchange back and forth in between the two railroad companies. Here's some stations that are not on the direct Middleborough line, but they are stations that were in Middleborough. They were basically on the Cape Cod branch of the line, and there was actually two stations that were, were located in what we call South Middleborough. The first station, um, as you make your way towards Cape Cod, um, was the Rock uh, Station, which is otherwise known as in Middleborough Rock Village. Um, so this is one of the stations there. Um, at this point, there was two tracks running past the station. Right now, there's only one track that's running through there. And then the second station was the South Middleborough Station, which is a little further south. Um, or further, I should say, east on the line, because this is where the, the line goes from south and then makes that, that curve east heading towards Cape Cod. I figured I would give these two stations an honorable mention since we're talking about Middleborough. All these buildings are gone. Um, currently in Middleborough, Massachusetts, there is two stations. Um, there's a brand new station being built uh, for... Um, for a brand new MBTA station, which I'm going to tell you about in a bit. And then, of course, there's the current MBTA Middleborough Lakeville station. So let's continue on. 
Another line that kind of um, got me interested in abandoned railroad lines was the Plymouth and Middleborough branch, as you can see, or maybe a little hard to see on the screen. You can see the 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 green, uh, not the green, but the brown little checkered line weaving its way from the left to the right. That's the abandoned railroad line. If if you're familiar with Massachusetts or in the Middleborough area, it's running parallel to Route 44, basically running from Middleborough all the way to Plymouth. And then basically that's what the line ran from Middleborough all the way over to Plymouth. Um, one of my friends, uh, Chuck, actually lived um, in in the area of where the abandoned railroad line would go through. It went actually right behind his house. And I tried to find the line, and of course it wasn't the easiest. Um, some of which is, you know, a little bit harder to see because, you know, of course, you know, some of it's grown over. Some of it's actually the actual Route 44. Um, and it's super cool to be able to kind of track those abandoned railroad lines. There was um, stations on either end. Of course, there was um, the station in Middleborough, which I showed a photograph of it. And then there, of course, was a station in Plymouth. But I wanted to show the station, uh, Darby, Darby uh, station um, that's in North Carver, Massachusetts. Uh, the line was basically the final railroad that would connect Middleborough to Plymouth. Um, this 16-mile route was opened in 1892 to serve as a connector for passenger and freight service in between the two lines. So basically, the Plymouth line ran all the way down to Plymouth, basically from Braintree. And then the Middleborough line, which was also known as the Fall River line, would go from Braintree all the way to Fall River. So think of you know looking at Boston and then having these spider legs coming out. And that's how the railroad lines were kind of... Um, connecting you know these communities this line actually joined two lines together basically the Plymouth and Middleborough Fall River line together by 1937 the eastern part of the line was abandoned so essentially the the portion of it that's uh, connecting to Plymouth so basically the the remainder of the line was basically from North Carver to Middleborough now, if you're familiar with Massachusetts, it used to be the cranberry capital of the world. So typically, the harvesters would harvest those cranberries in October and December, and this was the best way to move those harvests um, by train. So, of course, the tracks still got some use in between October and December, and then eventually, you know, a lot of railroads decided to, you know, you know, not the railroads, but a lot of the cranberry growers decided to maybe it'd be best to move by truck. And, of course, the track was deteriorating fairly quickly because it was only used three months of the year. In 1939, the tracks were removed and the line was abandoned. Still to this day, you can see uh, a mere path of where the line used to be, depending on uh, what segment you're kind of looking at. The return of passenger service. So remember, you know, by the late 1950s, you know, the service went away on this line, passenger rail service. So basically it was only freight. Um, and then in 1997, uh, passenger service returned to Middleborough uh, with the Middleborough Lakeville commuter rail line. This uh, provided... Uh, commuter rail service to these communities seven days a week round trip service from Boston and the line was of course formerly known as the Fall River line and would travel uh, you know from on uh, you know from the Middleborough stretch of it all the way up to the old Colony Main line right into South Station photograph you see here is a train parked at South Station the current stations, a lot different than what you've seen, and some of these names look a little bit familiar from the old stations. So, of course, we've got South Station, JFK UMass, uh, we've got Braintree, Quincy Center, which I read those out of order, but uh, Quincy Center, Braintree, Holbrook, Randolph, and then we've got, you know, the the, the Brockton's, which is Montello, Camp, uh, Brockton, and Campello, 
and then of course Bridgewater and Middleborough Lakeville. Now the Middleborough Lakeville station is literally on the Middleborough Lakeville line. So um, that's why it was coined the Middleborough Lakeville uh, station. So I kind of teased about this, the South Shore Rail Project. So basically bringing back rail service back to uh, New Bedford and Fall River. Now this was talked about for many, many years, for decades. And finally, you know, after several governors, you know, whether they were on either side of the, of the, you know, whether Republican or Democrat, basically we had several governors that were for rail service coming back to the New Effort Fall River line. So each governor, well, they were in office, pushed and pushed and pushed, and finally it's coming to fruition. So finally, you know, the New Effort Fall River line will be opening soon. So it's going to involve some new stations. So why is Middleborough getting a new station? So the Middleborough Lakeville station is actually on the leg of the um, Cape Cod branch. So that basically means that once uh, the trains travel to New Bedford Fall River, they wanted to not miss the Middleborough Lakeville station. So they ended up putting in a brand new station called Middleborough Station. Um, unfortunately, if they were to use the old station, they would have to do a backup onto the onto the current line and then go forward. So it involves several moves. In order to avoid that, just keep the train going north or south, depending on if it's coming from Boston or from you know one of the legs, New Bedford or Fall River, it would keep the train going in the same direction. That's why the new station. Uh, East Taunton is the next station there. And then basically, um, you would make your way uh, towards uh, the section here. I'm not too sure if you can see my mouse. So basically right here is it, it, it splits. So basically uh, there's the Fall River line and then there's the New Bedford line, which is here if you can see my cursor. So there'll be basically a couple of trains that will originate from New Bedford and a couple of trains that will originate from Fall River and then they'll basically make their way north. And of course, you know, out of South Station, when you do take a train south, you know, there's going to be, of course, uh, trains with a destination of New Bedford. And, of course, there's going to be stations with a destination of Fall River. So you need to make sure you get on the correct train. So other new stops uh, along the way, of course, I mentioned East Taunton, uh, Freetown. And then there's be the, uh, the Fall River uh, Depot. And then New Bedford will actually have two stops. Church Street and then um, the New Bedford Depot. So there'll be two stops in New Bedford. So uh, this is gonna be huge when these uh, communities actually get some rail service um, going to them. I mean, this has been a long, long ways coming. Uh, you notice it says South Shore or South Coast Rail Phase One. So eventually there's gonna be a more direct route um, basically running out of South Station down what's known as the Stoughton branch and then rehabbing the branch going all the way down to Taunton and then basically making a straight connection to basically New Bedford Fall River. Um, so that's going to be phase two. Um, that won't be until I think 2020, excuse me, on maybe another 10 years or more before we'll see that come to fruition. So this kind of gets commuter rail service right away using an existing line, which is the Middleborough Lakeville line, to service um, New Bedford Fall River. So basically running trains down, uh, down a current line and then joining everything up. So a little bit of background about the South Coast Rail Project. Uh, broke ground in July of uh, 2019. Uh, the cost of phase one is a whopping one billion dollars over one billion dollars with six new stations uh phase one should be completed by the end of 2023 so this year which is really exciting i'm hoping to make a trip out there to be able to get some photographs and some video and of course share it with you guys um on on the show eventually Well, that wraps it up for our history lesson, traveling down the old uh, Middleborough uh, line, uh, seeing some of the older depots. 
So certainly let us know if you like what you've seen tonight. You know, I would love to be able to do more of these kind of giving you a little bit of history about uh, a particular railroad line. Look at the old depots that were there. Of course, modern train stations don't have as much elegance and class as, you know, one of these older stations. And many of which are, didn't survive. Uh, unfortunately, you know, as I spoke about there, you know, South Station survived and of course Bridgewater survived and and Bridgewater Station is no longer being used as a train station. It's now a Burger King. Um, but at least, you know, the building's salvaged and it's still there. Uh, but yeah, if you like uh, some of the stuff, just let me know. I would love to be able to do more of these. Um, thanks, uh, Let's Go Rail Fanning. I figured we would do a book format because we're kind of looking back on history, uh, which is great. Um, thank you so much for everybody that's uh, joined us this evening. I know um, Les is uh, watching tonight. Thank you so much. Chris Schultz, uh, Lincoln, uh, Rody, Railroading, um, Ethan, uh, Dale, uh, Rick, uh, riding down under. Um, I'm so happy that you guys have joined and certainly share this on social media as well. Let your friends know about the show. We would greatly appreciate that. We're trying to grow this, uh, this channel. So certainly we're going to have some more great programming, uh, coming up through the year. We'll actually have a lot of produced videos hopefully coming up. So definitely, uh, be, uh, be aware of that and subscribe to the channel. That'll keep you informed of any, of any uh, new shows coming up. And of course, you can support the channel um, by uh, shopping our store at trainaficionado.com. We have all types of swag that you can purchase there. Uh, T-shirts, hats, hoodies, uh, just to name a few. We've got a couple of, I believe, a travel mug and a few other things. So definitely uh, check that out. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and so let's take a look at our next slide. And don't forget to stay connected with us. Sign up for our Trackside Bulletin. We don't email that often, but it's a great way to be able to stay in touch with us. The Trackside Bulletin, um, sign up for that at trainaficionado.com. And don't forget, we're on social media. Follow, like, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that as well. So that's tonight's. Uh, topic, Forgotten Stations and Depots of the Old Colony Railroad from Braintree to Middleborough. So hopefully we'll be doing another one of these again, kind of giving you some insight, looking um, at, you know, a, a railroad line that's maybe still around or gone, but, you know, we're able to kind of look forward uh, and find some of those photos. Um, next week, of course, you know, if you're a um, scanner enthusiast, definitely... Uh, tune in uh, to the scanner guys. Uh, we haven't decided a topic, um, but we will definitely have a show next week. I'm looking forward to that as well. So definitely uh, subscribe to that social media as well. I thank you so much for everyone that's joined us this evening. Um, thank you for your comments. And uh, we're really looking forward to... Uh, uh, the scanner guys next week, and then we'll wrap it up with another. Uh, is it? Uh, is it another train? Yeah, train aficionado show after that, and we'll go from there. I thank you so much for joining us. I we hope that you have a great evening. I'm Jonathan Higgins. Uh, safe rail fanning out there.